Well, good day, everybody, and it's great to have you with us here on theCUBE as we continue our CUBE conversations as a part of the AWS Startup Showcase. Pleased to welcome Jennifer Johnson in today. Jennifer is the Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer at Amplitude, which is a global leader in product intelligence. And she tells me her friends call her JJ. And so today it's, hello, JJ, how are you doing? I'm doing great, John, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate the time. Um, first off, tell us a little bit about Amplitude, uh, about your work in general for those who might not be familiar. And also, I'd like to hear a little more about product intelligence yes, and, and yes. about that concept, if you will, and how that is certainly taking on, I think, probably a pretty different meaning in this digital world that we're in today. That's right. That's right. Well, so I've been at Amplitude. I joined in October of 2020, so uh, not that long. Uh, and let me tell you, I, anyone who knows me knows that I am a CMO, but I am also a category designer. So I look at uh, I look at companies, I look at opportunities as market creation opportunities. And we're going to talk about that because that's a big reason why I joined Amplitude and why I'm so excited for the future of Amplitude. Um, and so when we think about our website today says product intelligence. If you read between the lines and I tell you I'm a category designer, you might understand that maybe that will evolve over time. But what product intelligence actually means is it is that it really connects digital products to revenue. And what do I mean by that? It, and we all know that everything is digital. I don't need to tell you that everything is digital. We have the whole world just moved to digital. Um, and it's interesting because we, we think about digital and we think about the DoorDashes and the Pelotons of the world, but really it's every company in every industry. Um, you know, our some of our largest customers are 100-year-old companies, right? And they have had to, not just because of, of the last year in the pandemic, but they've been really thinking about how do we disrupt ourselves, really? It's not even about disrupting the industry. It's actually about disrupting their own business around digital. So digital really isn't a nice to have anymore. It's existential. And we all, I think we all know that at this point. Um, but, you know, if the whole world has moved to digital, and I think I read something that IDC wrote, we're going to spend $6.8 trillion by 2023 on digital transformation. We're spending an enormous, I mean, I think enormous is even an understatement amount of money on digital. So what is the next thing that you have to do once you've spent all this time and money and effort and probably millions of dollars, billions per company actually transforming is you have to actually optimize it. And you have to figure out what your what digital products and digital investments you're making. You have to make sure that they actually connect to business outcomes, things like uh, re revenue, things like lifetime value, things like loyalty, things that drive your business forward. And that's really where product intelligence and the future of where Amplitude is going is so critical. Because if you think about, actually, one of our customers said it best, the customers of yesterday or the, the companies of yesterday, they put a website in front of their old way of doing things, their old products, their old way of doing things and called it digital. Like we just put a website in front of it. So it's digital. That is no longer the case. Now it's about redesigning your business and transforming value through new digital products and services. So digital products are actually the future of how businesses will operate in the new era. And so what happens is companies say, okay, we need to go build all these new products and services. And we have these goals of growth and revenue, and we hope the revenue comes out the other end. But there's really no way for, or the, no really effective way for companies to actually figure out how to manage and measure that in between. You build a product, you put it out to market, revenue comes out the other end. But how do you actually know if you're building the right things in the first place? How do you know what uh, what features, what behaviors, what actions, what combinations of those actually lead to things like engagement and revenue and loyalty? And then how do you actually go and double down on those? And what I mean by that is adapting the experience. If you know something works, and you know that every customer that looks like that person will do this and you can predict an outcome, why wouldn't you serve that up to every single person that looks like that? And really that whole notion of, of prediction and understanding and prediction and adapting, that's really where Amplitude plays a role. And that's what got me really excited about joining Amplitude and really excited about the future is every company is a digital company. And Really, companies have to completely rethink how they manage digital because it isn't just putting a website in front of it anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you've hit on something there. In fact, we've got a lot to unpack here, which is great. Um, but but you, you talk about that digital is a must, right? You got to have it's existential now for doing the business, which I think is absolutely correct. But because it's everybody and it is everywhere, and you've got a lot of categories, right? Um, as a chief strategy officer, I mean, you can't be all things to all people. You can't go off in every which way. But so, how are you focusing then your efforts in terms of identifying maybe key categories or prime categories as opposed to looking at this huge landscape? And that could be overwhelming, you know, in some respects. How are you focusing that? Yeah, I mean, there's there's two ways to look at it, and it is you know every company is a digital company, but really any company that has any kind of a digital product or an app, a digital app, anything that's digital is a as a relevant target for for amplitude. Um, traditionally, we have focused on with probably no surprise, we focused on the probably the what I'd say the digital native companies, the companies that are. Uh, more mature, but really they grew up through digitally through digital native. Those are the DoorDashes, the Postmates, the Ubers, the Lyfts, right? Um, and those companies were just built by design to think this way, right? We're building products. Our app is our business. Our product is our business. So we need to make sure that we deeply understand how the interactions with our customers through that experience actually translates and how do we continue to tweak and test and optimize. And digitally native companies tend to understand that inherently. So that's been a lot of the early adopters of Amplitude have been those digitally native companies. Now what we're seeing, and no surprise, is there's a really long tail of companies in more traditional industries. I mean, everything from uh, you know, hospitality and restaurants. Obviously, media is going through a huge digital disruption right now. Um, automotive. I mean, any any company that's looking at how do we build new ways to engage and provide experiences to our customers through any kind of a digital means, a digital product, an app, those are relevant targets for Amplitude. So I think, you know, people think, oh, it's every, every uh, industry looks very different, but the commonality is everyone needs to move to digital. And the great thing for Amplitude and for the market at large is a lot of our customers are these digitally native, what I would call the the thought leaders around digital. And so if we can help bring that, bring those best practices and bring that approach to some of the more traditional companies in traditional industries and help them become more like the Pelotons and the DoorDashes of the world, then that's great for everybody. You know, JJ, when, when you talk about uh, this transformation that's going on and, and the, the spaces in which it's going on, which is everywhere right now, I, I imagine there are still some folks who might be a little reluctant, right? You talked about slapping a new website on the old material and they think they're done, they wash their hands and they go away. And it's not that simple, right? Um, so what's that conversation like to people who maybe aren't willing to jump in, to take that risk as they see it, whereas you know it's an essential to their business? Yeah. So, you know, I do think that every disruption, technologically speaking or other, is really change management and digital is no different. Right. It's not just about moving to digital. It's changing the way that you're organized. It's changing your business structure, your, your strategy, your priorities. So I think that that organizations know they have to go there now. And even the ones that are reluctant, I'd say if they're reluctant, they're probably going to get disrupted. So I think everyone understands they need to go there. Our role is really to help organizations get there without, I mean, digital, the, the, the word that usually follows digital is transformation. And I think a lot of people think that digital transformation needs to be this, you know, three to five year strategic journey and cost millions of dollars with armies of consultants. And really what we're helping to do is help organizations just answer the question, how is our product tied to our revenue? And we do that by bringing the data to the teams that actually need it. And it was really, it was really surprising to me to understand the process in some of these really large enterprises around how product and marketing teams uh, get data. And, and a lot of times, if you have a question about something, if you're a product, if you're a product manager, obviously you want to understand how is our product doing, what features are resonating, what you know features are leading to things like engagement or revenue or, you know, subscriptions or loyalty or whatever it is, right? As a marketer, you also want to know that. As a marketer, you also want to know what campaigns are we driving that are actually creating value? Are there things that we should be doing? Are there areas we should double down on? And so 
The process is if you have a question about something or a, a, a hypothesis that you want to answer, a lot of times you have to send this request to some centralized data team or a data science team. Uh, you know, organizations have, you know, large B2C organizations. Most of them have armies of data scientists and business intelligence platforms. And you send a request and you might get an answer back in a few weeks, maybe a month. And uh, maybe it's the right answer or usually what happens, and I think we can all relate to this, is you ask a question and you get data back and then it sparks five more questions. And so that whole process is this cyclical thing that I always say, it, by the time you actually figure out the answer to your question, it's enough time to get Amazon in the new digital era. And so what we're actually doing is helping to bring that data, which we all know is the crown jewel of any organization. We're bringing that data and we're democratizing it and bringing it to all the teams that actually need it. Lock, unlock it from data scientists and BI and bring it to the teams that, that need it, whether it's product, whether it's marketing, whether it's sales, whether it's customer success. And the greatest thing is it's not as a tool for everyone. And then all of a sudden you have these siloed tools, marketing has their tool, product has their tool, CS has their tool, is you actually have one platform, one system, and one source of data that all those teams use. So marketing doesn't say, well, yeah, my mine says this, and it looks at it from this lens, and product says, well, my data says this, but it looks at it from this lens. All of a sudden you've removed that entire conversation or that entire debate, and that changes everything. It changes the way that Companies get insights into customer behavior. It, it changes the way that they build products. It changes the way that the teams work together. Product and marketing can now work off of a common set of data. And so really Amplitude is helping to drive that change. And you don't have to do it through a three-year implementation with an army of, of consultants that come in. It's something that can be done very easily. And so, and it, it you know, I know everyone wants an easy button, um, it is quite easy though. It's not, it's not the, the, the three year or even the one year transformation. It's actually a way to, to bring that data to the teams that need it quickly. Um, the other thing I'd say to it is it's bringing the right data to them. Um, I was reading something from Gartner that said 85% of marketing analytics tools. Now these are tools that usually track things like ad attribution, website visits and how that, you know, how that relates to revenue. Well, in a customer acquisition scenario where you just want to know what ads actually lead to a, a cart, uh, put someone going to a cart, someone purchasing, that was probably sufficient. But in the, in the new world, that's just not answering the same question. Like if you need to add, answer a question of what features, what behaviors, what actions within the product actually drive business outcomes, Knowing what ads people clicked on and what web visits that you know that that you know people had, that's not going to answer. That's not. It's just answering a t totally different question. And eighty five percent of companies are using marketing analytics tools to actually answer questions like what features we need to build. So that's another key point here is companies need to answer this question. They know they do. They just don't have the tools to do it and the data to do it. So they're using tools that were designed for a completely different purpose. And so really, that's another great thing about Amplitude is we're actually giving them the, the actual, the right data to answer the questions. So if you're, if you're somebody's headlights you know, for down the road, then in terms of you know, you're looking for behavior, traits, and, 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 and patterns, you're looking for increased customer engagements, right? And you have all these wonderful tools now, you know, not that you're missing anything, but where do you think that you can even sharpen the pencil a little bit more so that down the road here? What... What do you think technologically you are capable or you would like to be able to do in terms of making that an even richer engagement, even a, a bigger, uh, a, a, a deeper dig? Yeah. Well, I mean, so we we have this, this uh, immense, deep, fast, smart database of customer behavior. So if you think of it, it's almost like the, the possibilities are endless. Anything that you need to be able to know or any question you could ask of your data to know what combinations of features, what combinations of behaviors actually lead to things like retention or churn or revenue. And then you can actually start to model those into cohorts. If I know that a customer does these five things in this order and they're five times more likely to churn, well then any customer that actually doesn't just look like that based on your demographics, who you are, where you live, et cetera, but based on actually what you do in the product, we can start to cohort them and say, this person actually looks like this other person based on their behavior. And therefore, we might actually 
personalize uh, an, an experience for them. We might send them an offer if we think they're going to churn because we know they're likely to churn based because other people that look like them do. Um, and, or we're not going to send them anything because we already know they're loyal. So they're already likely to buy. So it's answering more questions, but then it's also, well, how do you actually use that to really personalize experiences? And I, that word is so overused, but in this way, I mean, it's not about I'm going to serve you a piece of content because I know what industry you work in or I know where you live. I'm actually going to personalize your experience because I know that you, John, as an individual do these things. And therefore, I know that you are either uh, a loyal customer or you've got a high likelihood to churn, et cetera. And then I'm going to personalize an experience that's a good experience for you, but also a good experience for the business. So I think there's more um, types of analytics there's more uh, ways to personalize and build experiences, I think, in the in the modern way, not the, the old demographic way. Um, but also even every organization around the, the company, like everyone touches the customer. So, you know, customer experience, as we know, is is, you know, I hate to call it call it the buzzword. Of course, everybody wants a great customer experience, but everybody talks about customer experience. Anyone who touches the customer is part of customer experience, which is basically the whole company. And so if you think about today, there's obviously product teams, marketing teams are heavy users of, of Amplitude. But going forward, I mean, imagine a world where, you know, anytime, you know, anytime you have a touch point with a customer, you can use this, this insight into what they're actually doing in the product to, to get some level of, of intelligence that you didn't have before and use it to proactively give them a better experience, right? Whether it's, you know, uh, you know, at renewal time or you know that they're likely to do something. So you offer something that gives them a better experience or you're in customer service. And wouldn't it be great to actually know if someone's like logging a support ticket, what they're actually doing in the product is going to help you give them a better support experience, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it, the, the options here, I think, are because of the data that we have and the way that we can, like you said, build these patterns and pattern match what features and actions lead to outcomes. Uh, I think the options are limitless. And I think this is the new way, like customers that companies that understand this is the holy grail of the new way of, of digital and understanding your customers and having this intelligence into the product is the new way to engage. The customers that get that are going to be the customers that win. What is a new game? You're right. I think limitless is a really good word too, because the capabilities that you're developing and, and the product and services you're providing, they really are limitless. Uh, so thanks for sharing the time and the insight. A pleasure to have you on the queue. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you, John. You bet. John Walls here on the Cube Cube Conversation on the AWS Startup Showcase. We're talking with Jennifer Johnson from Amplitude.